To say the Anacrusis is similar to Left 4 Dead would be a severe understatement. From hordes of mindless monsters, to special enemies that put the party in a jam, to safe rooms that separate each act of an episode, this four-player co-op FPS sticks so close to its inspiration, it could almost qualify as a spin-off. Unfortunately, that nostalgic mimicry allows for little in the way of interesting new ideas or even expected modernizations, resulting in a flavorless distraction that feels like it could have come out in 2008. Combat is bland and one note, the graphics are well below today's standards, and enemy variety is almost non-existent. The only thing the Anacrusis really has going for itself is a unique disco-era sci-fi setting, which would be easier to appreciate if the rest of it wasn't so woefully bland. It's been 15 years since the original Left 4 Dead, but the Anacrusis feels sorely stuck in the past. Alarmingly true to its roots, the Anacrusis has you casually jogging from safe room to safe room until a final showdown at the end of each episode asks you to hold out against an army of baddies. That familiar framework also includes mowing down hundreds of identical monsters, which is undermined by some of the most forgettable gunplay in recent memory. Nearly every part of the combat is mediocre, whether it's these hilariously unintimidating and low-res enemies, the generic laser weapons that all feel like clones of one another, or the eyebrow-raising lack of a sprint button. And even though there are only five episodes to pick from that can be completed in a total of less than four hours, many of the same areas are repeatedly reused, so you can't even rely on fresh levels to keep things interesting. Thankfully, the otherwise monotonous trek through samey hallways is momentarily elevated whenever one of the special enemy types shows its face, like the spawner who hides and spits out little turret creatures, this guy who ensnares one player and renders them unable to defend themselves until killed, or this angry lad who just has lots of health and runs around stomping things. Learning to work as a team and deal with these tricky foes goes a long way in making things more interesting early on. Unfortunately, even these brief pockets of amusement quickly fade. After you've been spit on by a gooper or blinded by a flasher a handful of times, you'll familiarize yourself with their tactics enough to dispose of them in a few seconds whenever a new one spawns. No matter what you're fighting, the weapons you'll use to do so never stop being disappointing. With only a few variations of the handful of laser-blasting rifles, machine guns, and shotguns, nice. plus a single sidearm to use when you're out of ammo, you'll have seen most of the arsenal available to you after just the opening episode. Every once in a while, you'll find an upgraded version of your submachine gun blaster while exploring the space station's white corridors, but aside from doing more damage and maybe applying a minor status effect, there's not much variety. It's also just disappointing that most weapons have no personality to them. There's not a whole lot to distinguish the plasma rifle from the submachine gun blaster, for example. Don't get goo, don't get goo. You also get the odd gadget to play with, like these grenades that pull nearby enemies into a vortex, or this one that lights everyone on fire, or an auto turret that can be deployed to help take down enemies for you but it's all very basic stuff I've seen in shooters from over 10 years ago. One mildly interesting addition is the ability to customize your playstyle mid-run by finding matter compilers throughout the level and selecting one of three randomly rolled perks. You might gain the useful ability to carry more grenades, regenerate ammo by killing marked enemies, become invulnerable while standing in goo, or automatically mark any special enemy just by aiming at it. Although these are mostly small upgrades, they do succeed at mixing up the Left 4 Dead formula at least a tiny bit. It definitely feels good to make your character your own, even if you get stripped of everything once the mission is completed. It would have been nice if this build crafting were expanded upon further, because the potential for assigning roles on your team starts to shine through by the end of most episodes. 
For all its gameplay shortcomings, the Anacrusis definitely stands out with its 70s style and swagger, complete with interior design that looks like it would be right at home in one of those vans with carpeted walls and beaded curtains. This completely unique aesthetic, coupled with its wisecracking characters, gives everything a levity and charm that's largely absent in its dark and bloody zombie-centric peers. So they can use it against us. Not sure on how we stop that, but for now, we can warn Earth. Unfortunately, that awesome retro vibe eventually fades once you've walked down your 50th empty hallway and ends up feeling like an idea that never got expanded on in early access. There's not even much of a story to support this cool setting, with the little plot that does exist delivered via extremely short dialogue snippets from your characters during each episode. That's really too bad considering the interesting aesthetic is its strongest asset. A fleshed out story might have made it worth sticking around in spite of shortcomings elsewhere. Aside from the standard episodes, you'll also find a 4v4 versus mode that pits one team of player-controlled monsters against an opposing team of survivors. Smartly, this mode is designed with the assumption that the survivors will always lose, since the alien team respawns infinitely. Once the survivors are killed, the team switch sides and the winner is determined by whoever survives the longest, a huge improvement compared to Left 4 Dead's more lopsided PvP. Taking on the role of the special alien types definitely has some novelty to it too, even if not all those mobs are created equally. The silly flasher's chief characteristic is that he glows brightly, so you kind of just stand nearby the survivors until they find the time to kill you. But others, like the Brute, can be a lot of fun to handle as you rampage around stomping your friends flat. It's definitely the Anacrusis' most fun game mode, and playing it alongside friends will almost certainly result in plenty of laughs and some good old-fashioned trash talk. Sadly, PvP only has five small levels to play, each of which is pulled from a section of a corresponding episode, giving the whole mode a distinctly tacked-on feel to it. After a few rounds, my group quickly moved on, having seen just about all there was to offer. There's also a horde mode called Holdout, which sticks you in a small arena to fight waves of aliens instead of going through all the trouble of finding them. There's really not much to this mode aside from sitting back and shooting everything in sight, occasionally completing objectives like standing in a designated zone to fill up a progress bar. The big twist here is that at the end of five waves, you get to face off against a souped up special boss enemy, complete with a health bar. Regrettably, these are basically just bullet sponges with all the same behaviors as the regular versions, except they can kill you in one hit. But still, it's a nice little wrinkle for a package that contains far too few surprises. What's it doing? Despite being in early access for almost two years, the Anacrusis also still has a number of significant bugs. Those range from enemies attacking me through walls or glitching out like this, to cutscenes and UIs behaving erratically, to frame rates tanking when lots of enemies catch on fire. Very few issues were bad enough to deter me from continuing on, but it certainly didn't bolster my rapidly waning interest. Let's get these quick. Quick. The Anacrusis borrows so much from Left 4 Dead that it forgets to do its own thing and refuses to benefit from 15 years of co-op shooter evolution. The cool disco aesthetic and alien armies definitely offer a much needed break from zombie hordes, but that can only get you so far when poor enemy variety, dreadfully boring gunplay, and lifeless levels make shooting your way to the next safe zone an uneventful affair. The 4v4 mode at least offers some good opportunities for an over-the-top alien slaying competition with friends, but that well runs dry pretty quickly too, and the five short campaign episodes and tacked on horde mode become dull even faster. Watch out! Behind you! For more, check out our reviews of Arizona Sunshine 2 and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. And for everything else, stick with IGN.